Hello team, greetings for the day. Welcome back to the tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are in chapter 5 and the last topic of chapter 5 which is about the defect management and we'll be just quickly exploring the same and understanding what is that we are going to cover as a part of it. So before we get started with anything, we have learned about the defect in the chapter 1 that what exactly is a defect which is a deviation from the expected result. Generally, we have certain requirements given to you and as we test each requirement, we find certain deviations sometime and these deviations are called as defect which need to be analyzed and corrected or fixed. So, let's understand something called as a defect tracking life cycle or maybe the bug life cycle which we commonly know in corporate industry as. So, these are the different states of a defect which travels from one state to another by having various transitions between them and helps you understand how a life cycle of the defect is managed. So generally when a defect is found by the tester, it is reported with a status new. And once it is reported with a status new, it will be updated to the test manager that, hey, look, I have got a new test defect here. Can you please look into this and approve it? So test manager's responsibility will be to evaluate the reported defect and see that if it is a genuine defect or not. Then, once the manager finds it genuine, the status of the defect will be changed from new to open. Once it is declared open, that means it is passed on to the developer lead to assign it to a developer and ask them to fix it. Once the developer lead assigns the defect to a particular developer, uh, the status will be changed to assigned. But in case the defect is not found genuine, it will be directly closed from the new status to closed. So, there are possibilities that a defect which are reported by the tester may be due to an misunderstanding or may be due to an invalid set of data which he tried with or it might be also a typographical error where the cases can say that the new defect can be directly closed by the manager. Once assigned, a developer has to start working on the debugging where generally debugging involves analyzing the reported issue, conducting a RCA which is root cause analysis and fixing the issue. So as the root cause analysis or analyzing the issue starts, that means what reported defect is there with the developer, developer starts understanding it. So by understanding it, developer has few options to give away. The very first thing is he might find the defect as genuine and find the issue for that and he fix and corrects it and mark the defects as resolved. In case the developer finds it as that the defect is not something which can be fixed right now and might require some additional information, then he might mark it as deferred, where deferred generally means that the defect will be fixed somewhere later in the new version or maybe somewhere later in the life cycle, not right now. But what if the defect is not found genuine by the developer stating that it is working fine for him, the defect can also be rejected by the developer, stating that this defect does not exist for development environment. So, we, may, we, may, we might need to provide certain additional information to justify that what exactly is the defect or maybe it will be due to the test environment or the compatibility issues. So, we need to elaborate that to the developer so that developer can understand it and fix the issue. Once resolved, a tester comes with a responsibility to conduct retesting here. Retesting is something which you know from chapter 2 again, which is also known as confirmation testing to rerun the same test case that revealed the defect to you. And if retesting passes, it generally means that the defect has been resolved and verified. Where verify means we involve the test manager once again that can you just cross check that my retesting has passed, is it fine with you? And if you verify this, you can mark it as closed. But in case, if the resolved issue or retesting fails, it will be marked as reopen, where reopen can come to open state directly and will be reassigned to the developer. Once it is verified and correct, it will be closed again. So generally, this is what we call it as a defect tracking lifecycle, where these are some of the template states which can be used as a part of the lifecycle. If you want, you can additionally have some internal status or different names for these status to validate the defect management. Add on to this, generally this ISTQB section speaks about what are the objects of writing a defect report. That what is the importance, the significance when you write a defect report. So generally there are three major objectives to write the defect report. The first one is to provide developers and other stakeholders about the information of the issue. Generally if you write a defect report, it will be easy for the other stakeholders to understand that what exactly was the defect which you came across. Because being a tester, it only happened with you. 
then to communicate with the other stakeholders and make them understand, we generally write a defect report. The other objective is to provide the means of tracking the quality of the system. So if you provide defect reports or you create defect reports, that can also help the test manager to determine that what is the quality of the product as of now and how much we have achieved it and how much more we need to do. Generally, by finding severe defects, you improve the quality of the system. And by measuring the number of defects found and how many severe defects have been resolved, we determine the quality of the system. The third is to provide ideas for development as well as test process improvement. So generally, as you log the defects in a report, it also includes inputs from the other stakeholders like developers by conducting a root cause analysis. And as we conduct root cause analysis, we find out the source of the defect. As we find the source of defect, we come to know where exactly this defect was introduced. As we know about the where exactly it was introduced, it can help us to add more value to that particular phase where it was supposed to be detected. But as we could not do it, we can add more process improvement values to see that if we can conduct a static testing at that point of time so that the defects can be identified at an early stage. So these three are the major objectives of the defect management or writing the defect report. Additionally, the next topic will talk about what a defect report should generally include. And this is just a standard template. If you want, you can have something more or maybe less than this, but that is specific to your organization or domain. For example, a unique identifier, a unique ID for the defect, a title and short summary, which will tell that what is the defect is about, the date of defect reported, issuing organization, that whether it is from development team, requirement team, or testing team, and the author, the one who has reported the defect, identification of the test item and the environment, development life cycle phase in which it was detected, which is to compare whether it was a phase containment or phase escape, description of the defect to enable reproduction, that how exactly it can be reproduced, expected and actual result, the severity, the priority, state of defect report, that what status as of now it is on. Once it is resolved, we can add the conclusions, recommendations and approvals of the defect. Global issues are mentioned in terms of regression testing to be conducted post the defect is resolved. Because as we know, regression can be conducted even in case when the defect is resolved because it might have any kind of adverse effect on the unchanged part. Whereas the change history will also include like the version control thing if the defect report was updated from time to time with additional information. Whereas references, including the test cases that reveal the problem, would also be attached to the defect report, which would help us to understand what steps did you take to get these kind of issues, which can also be used as a defect taxonomy in future for preparing good number of test cases. So this is one of the template report, which we can generally include as a part of the defect report. But if you want, you can have something more or less than this in the defect report as well. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We have defect management covered as a last topic of the chapter five. The next tutorial, we will be talking about the sample questions from this chapter. So stay tuned for that. And in case you have any clarifications more on the defect management, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you on the same thing. In case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel, which will help you to get notified with the latest tutorials on the series and other series as well. Thanks for watching the TV team. Take care of it. And of course, let me know if you can help you with anything else. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.